He that would make his own liberty secure must guard even his enemy from oppression. For if he violates this duty, he establishes a precedent that will reach to himself. Thomas Paine Hello again. Um, I don't want to make this long, but I think it always ends up being long. But um, it's just kind of an introduction to all the topics that I do want to cover in the next couple of live streams and um, go a little bit in depth as much as I can. Um, it's not going to be covered in its entirety in one live stream, even if it was like 20 live streams, but uh, it's just to talk about it uh see the written history accounts of it and again we have to take that for a grain of salt um but just saying okay this is what the victors or the the people who edited and published the history of what some person or written account was saying um and then uh eventually you know maybe sometime a uh, a different account of it shows up either in a uh buried somewhere or found somewhere uh, that seems to be suppressed or censored by uh, the people who don't want everyone else seeing it. Anyways, um, starting off, let's talk about censorship. Uh, again, my main YouTube channel is uh, currently down uh, as far as live streaming uh, based off of the Isaac Cappy Reveals Hollywood Pedophilia and more. Uh, due to harassment and cyberbullying, all in all, all I did was just upload the video that he did where he uh, accuses people and, you know, make up your own mind. At least that video is there for people to, to listen to and watch, uh, make up your own decision whether uh, whether or not you believe him or not. Um, but some people just want to know what ex actually happened uh, because time, the concept of time, basically... Um, Things reveal themselves. Anyways, that's why my backup channel is doing the live stream. Um, I do live stream on different formats, DLive, Twitch. Um, what else do I go? Uh, Periscope. Uh, you know, most of those don't hold my videos. Uh, some get taken down. Sometimes Periscope doesn't even... Um, uh, uh, they'll block me and I'll get no notification that I am actually being blocked. Okay, uh, let's start moving on to the topics. Um, now, uh, the first one is revolutions. And what's interesting uh, that I'll probably get into is Maximilien Robespierre. He's a French lawyer. He's the one who um, uh, led the... Led <laughs> the um, French Revolution. Um, and what's written about him, of course, can be from the standpoint of the ones who are against him. I mean, think of every deist that's come about, um, aside from like a few individuals that have done, um, at least some contribution that can't be denied, right? Uh, they'll just focus on those parts. Just look at Thomas Paine. Everyone knows about Thomas Paine, his founding father, you know, uh, written books of common sense. Um, uh, he was one of the writers of the Constitution of the United States. Uh, what you don't know about him is that he was a deist, um, that uh, he wrote other books like um, The Rights of Man and The Age of Reason. Those uh, were very volatile books, even to the founders and his so-called friends, if you could call him that. Um, it's betrayed, supposedly, by George Washington and Maximilian Robespierre. Uh, eventually, Thomas Jefferson came in to help, uh, along with the other few individuals. Um, and he, when he died, supposedly, there's only six people at his funeral. So things that you don't really know about. Uh, and they won't teach about Thomas Paine. Now, 
we go to Maximilian Robespierre. And now I'm talking about revolutions. Revolutions, what makes a successful revolution? Basically, ones that still exist today. Uh, United States is, is one. Is it really successful? Well, we just had that one and we didn't really uh, revolutionize anything else uh, once it's been um, corrupted and all the uh, faults have been discovered. Um, because I am pretty technical, um, think of it, <laughs> so my analogy may stem from that. So imagine that uh, there's a software product, or even a hardware product, version 1.0. Uh, so imagine that uh, our, our form of our governing ourselves, the Constitution, um, we're still in version 1.0. Maybe there's a couple of bug fixes, but not too many. Uh, we're maybe on version 1.0, 213. I don't know. Make up a number. But basically, we haven't gone to you know version 2.0. Maybe 2.0 could have been the uh, Civil War. So, uh, but really, it didn't make uh, huge adjustments to just what the ideals were for the founding fathers especially the deists, we you can call some of them Christian deists, that's fine, but basically that um, the equality of, of, of everyone, um, even expanding to, <laughs> if you want to get to nature and, you know, all the animals, the, just the central rights of living things. Um, so, uh, interesting, just some of the uh, quotes that, um, uh, that's being just shown on, I guess, Wikipedia or Google. Uh, I mean, this is a nice one. The fr secret of freedom lies in educating people, whereas the secret of tyranny is in keeping them ignorant. I'm sure we could find some good stuff uh, about them. Um, I think if you want to look upon him as an irony, his nickname was the incorruptible. So he couldn't be corrupted. Uh, except he's attributed to being as leading the uh, reign of terror back in the uh, the French Revolution, and so basically uh, he's charged with uh, executing. Again, he's a French lawyer. He's accused of executing um, all the all the previous um, people who reigned uh, in in France's monarchy um, without trial. And um, even a couple of people who were part of the revolution at the top, he was. So he, you know, just kind of reminds me of that quote that you you will probably think about too. Is like uh, from the Dark Knight, one of the Batman uh, movies in the trilogy of the Dark Knight. Like um, you either uh, become a villain. <laughs> I don't remember that quote. Let me let me type it in. Um, dark. Right. Quote, become. Uh, you either die your hero or you live long enough to see um, yourself become the villain. But, you know, I, I don't see, uh, see Maximilian Robespierre as, as actually having done that. But we'll get into that in more detail and I'm going to do a little bit more research. Um, so, uh, one of the things with Maxine Robespierre is he was a good friend of the Founding Fathers. He was a good friend of Thomas Paine until Thomas, he was betrayed. He betrayed Thomas Paine and uh, was going to execute Thomas Paine because Maxine Robespierre wanted to behead uh, Francis King at that time. But since, uh, and, and therefore... <laughs> Um, you know, and there's this story of uh, Thomas Paine being lucky that he opened the door. Um, he asked for the door to his um, his cell to be partially open so he could get some fresh air during the day of his execution um, or the night before. And uh, what they used to do is they marked X's or whatever it is that that mark was in front of the cell door. So the next day, the, the people who were going to people who are going to be executed they can see that that mark is in front of the door and so they know who to take um but since 
his door was slightly open. It was on the outside of the door, not the inside, um, which doesn't make sense because they would probably still put it on the inside. Anyways, the, the people the next day overlooked it and he didn't get executed the following day when he should have. And somewhere around three days later, uh, Maximilian Robespierre was uh, executed himself. Um, and therefore, Thomas Paine was able to get free. Of course, it took years for him to become free uh, because George Washington wouldn't help him. And uh, Thomas Jefferson eventually uh, tried to, uh, helped get a pardon for him and get him back to the United States. So here's kind of the idea of revolution. Uh, as far as the successful world, what, what should happen? I think uh, the person in charge... Um, because if, it, if it's a revolution and you are a general, you're a commander of, of some forces and you overtake a, a government, it's, that is called, um, a coup, right? A military coup. And, uh, just like, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, he led a coup against, uh, not Maximilian Robespierre, um, but there's five people, uh, in charge, uh, after the French revolution and basically Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, led a coup against them and ended up, you know, starting his Napoleonic era. But, um, so a lot of those revolutions don't stand up uh, till the present. If you want to, we're going to talk about past, present, future, as if it exists as, as uh, the traditional, um, traditional, Materialist, I guess, uh, say it does. <clears throat> All right. So, um, so it didn't stand up to the test of time. Now, what is the correct thing to do? I mean, uh, the only exception seemed to have been George Washington. George Washington um, led the United States um, Army. Um, uh, I mean, before it was the United States and uh, during the Revolutionary War and they eventually became president. But it wasn't like a king. It wasn't a dictatorial position. So that's one one step to do. Another step is um, there's another person that's very attributed and I used to remember his name very similar to George Washington. And um, basically you can look it up and I probably should too. Just so I can remember the name is um, generals who did who um, conquered, but did not. I know I spelled it wrong. Conquered. I'm trying to remember his names. It was during the. Uh, Is there is somewhere in Rome? Uh, so George Washington is attributed to, and the only other person was um, I forgot his name. I'm trying. I'm trying to find out who it was. But basically, they called upon this general uh, to help uh, save Rome. He saved Rome, and then he just went back to doing what he was doing, like being a farmer or whatever it is that he was doing. I can't remember his name. I've said it, uh, I mentioned it once before a long time ago, but basically uh, I'll, I'll probably try to remember that for the in-depth video. All right, so um, majority of revolutions uh, don't install, you don't become a dictator um, by being the general. And of course, Julius Caesar, of course, had the same thing happen to him, right? Now, here's the other thing. Um, if you lead a revolution, do you kill off all of the uh, previous reigning government, whether it's monarchy or dictatorship or like a democracy republic or whatnot and uh, of course there's not many republics out there um actual republics 
Do do you kill them off? Right? That's I think uh Thomas Paine was like, no, let's let's not do that. Uh obviously with the quote of his. Um but what do you do with them? Uh, do you exile them? Do you keep them around but not in power? Or do you put them in in certain positions of power still but not with uh, military power? I mean, if the written accounts of uh, like uh, Genghis Khan are true and stuff like that, basically he would conquer different towns and villages and countries and, and whatnot and still have them in power just become vassals to his uh to his reign and um uh, that's difficult to do unless you are a vast uh, military superpower and things are quite different now than they are back then uh the other thing is um if you do become uh again like i was saying uh, someone who leads a revolution becomes free from some form of uh control whether it's government or religion or both, most of the time it's both. Don't uh, basically don't take a position of power. Just leave. Just don't be engaged in uh, whatever government is formed or non-government. Maybe um, I mean at some local level with no power. Sure, I think that'll be fine. But uh, so basically. It's tough because then you don't know what the freedom that people have, whether they are going to form another government or some dictatorship. Um, you have to still say, hey, uh, we took down <laughs> something bad in order to be free. Instead, uh, we keep, why do you guys keep going for this? Uh, one man up one upmanship i guess you could call it and just keep on wanting to assume the same power that the previous uh system had so uh, definitely uh, it's a hard and difficult fight uh, and it's always been it seems from uh if there's meaning of life purpose of life i guess you could say one that's stood the test of time from since the beginning of time has always been those uh the fight against freedom the fight for freedom and against those who are against freedom the ones who want to be free themselves but um, control others that has always been the case it's still to this day occurring and um it's always and just kind of like the Greeks and a lot of other uh, early civilizations it's always been about freedom and, and liberty uh, free will you could say like I think what's interesting is um, when I listen to a lot of um, people <laughs> who make videos about the esoteric and occult and they go into liberty and they're saying liberty doesn't mean freedom no liberty does mean freedom it's free choice freedom to do as one chooses um, but I guess that you can see that's um, I, I don't know where they're getting that idea from that it's not freedom. I, uh, they could see it as, as a, how the military views the word uh, liberty, right? It's, it's not freedom to do what you want, freedom to do what you're allowed to do by uh, some authority. Dale quote is that, but <clears throat> um, liberty, uh, as far as the etymology is concerned, has always been about um, uh, freedom of choice, freedom to do what you want, uh, free will, all of that stuff. And so uh, the state of being free, and it's always been the case, um, and still going today. And it's, it's just how long are is that game going to keep going on right and uh at what sacrifices what evil what devilry will you go in either direction whether um to suppress it or to uh um to establish freedom just 
That's the entirety of the revolution of man, basically, uh, of humans. Uh, I just think it's it's very interesting. And the thing is, being free from a government entity is one thing. I think it was easily done, or not easily done, it was very difficult to do, but it was successfully done, let's just say that, in the United States and America. Uh, because... Uh, there was not a a lot of power. Um, it was a remote war, basically. The, you've got one country that's that's fighting um, a very long distance away, and uh, without many allies. Um, basically, the United States understood the need to having allies to fight against the British, and therefore recruited uh, the Native Americans and and the French. Um, probably they tried recruiting as many others uh, if you look into it but British really didn't have many allies uh, to uh, to prevent the, uh, the the uprising that occurred now if it would have happened in Europe now Europe is a different case because there's a lot of uh, like backroom dealings hidden types of established uh, allyship um, based upon religion uh, religion uh, like the Roman uh, Empire the Holy Roman Empire the uh, Rome the Vatican Jesuits whatever you want to call it uh, Catholicism uh, those allyship uh, remain in place because um, you've got an army um, where all the priests have um, some form of power for some government, uh, especially monarchy, because monarchies um, establish the authority that they're representatives and chosen lineage of, of some uh, deity. And so uh, the church can always help them in, in all these different ways, whether it's from monetary uh, or military, whatever type of support. So uh, you're going to have a lot of allies going against uh, whoever's just um, trying to take over. You can see that during the the uh, Napoleon Bonaparte's um, reign. Now, there's also the concept of money. That became supposedly a big problem with the, uh, the founding of America because they were broke. Um, and so there's just, you can see that there's just a lot of issues with it. Um, now, how does money in the first place become utilized by, say, uh, culture or civilization or government or whatever it is? And to, because there's two ways to start. You can either demolish the previous currency an institute new one and some type of authority uh, some type of centralization ignores uh, uh, you know it has to support the refusal of accepting the previous coin um, in order to establish the new one the problem is if it's backed by something um, it's still uh, worth it in different other countries um, and your new currency may not be accepted by the other countries. So that becomes a difficulty. Or you create the new currency, uh, but don't try to demolish the other one. The other one um, is still it, uh, allowed. Um, but how do you get people to accept a new currency instead of just still using the previous currency? Now, all of that is just negated um if <laughs> all of that is negated um if it's controlled by uh an international uh centralized system of currency bankers the banking system however one you want to however you want to call it um but the way to actually go about and in instituting a new currency that's not controlled by that system 
is going to have to be where you can only buy certain goods, products, whatever it is, with the currency that you want accepted. So if the United States had their own currency and they had some sort of uh, um, resource or goods that like Europe or Asia or whatever couldn't, uh, um, couldn't readily give out, well, basically you establish the, the currency of the, the, new, the new currency of that civilization or that country, whatever government, whatever it is. And um, the only way to get that resource is to have people invest in your, in your currency. So that's kind of how money is, is, uh, can be reestablished to be not in the hands of those who can magically create it. I mean, money is a weird topic because when you look into all these uh, uh, corporations that keep losing money, we, we see it now even with uh, movie theaters and, and you know, uh, the whole conspiracy of, of uh, establishment of New World Order type of thing is they should be bankrupt and out of business, that, but they keep getting billed out. Um, but they don't change their strategy. They don't change how they how they run their organization. It keeps coming out with the same products, yet ends up being successful. Um, not by not by any goods that they sell. Right, they're losing money, but because they're following that narrative, the propaganda of the established establishment of some sort of control group. They remain in business. They're they're okay. It's like you don't really see the record books of it. They lose millions or even billions, but they're fine. Basically, you don't know who the bankers are. You don't. Um, maybe maybe like the, your local bank or something like that, but you don't know who prints the money. Um, how they how you know it's just a big fraudulent system. Um, it's it's basically just bookkeeping. So as long as you have your own bookkeeping, you can establish your own currency. Uh, but to legitimize it, you need to have some sort of resource where no other country, government, region can provide that resource um, except for the currency that, that you're trying to legitimize. And so uh, money is going to be a big topic and um, how to wrest it from the control system. Uh, that way we don't have to go into some type of barter system. Um, go back to a barter system. And I think this was something that the uh, founding fathers were really trying to um, establish, that they really had a lot of arguments for and against because i think um a lot of the because think about it, the wealthy really wanted had a big say in the formation of the united states and what they were still allowed to do i mean this is one of the reason why um slavery was still a big deal and why even the people who were against slavery and wanted to abolish slavery at that time couldn't because well they just wanted to make sure that they can form the treaties between the 13 colonies and, and prevent the the revolution from collapsing. And um, in order to do that, they also needed uh, resources and uh, in order to sustain an economy to, to ward off any um, further further attacks to get their get the country back to the British uh, ruling. Um, so what what resources could did they have at the time i mean the only thing that they had was slaves that was like if not the top one of the top uh things that they had um uh, so uh 
but they couldn't really establish currency for that because every other country could have slaves. You know, they can have the slaves brought to them probably cheaper since it wasn't even further distance. So therefore, it was not a commodity commodity where everyone else, every other country out there is going to say, yeah, well, we can have our own slaves from this. So you know, we don't really need your currency. Um, but now that there's been a lot of uh, technologies and a lot of precious metals and stuff like that that can be uh, mined and unfortunately uh, there's there's still uh, the availability of moving to a uh, <laughs> a non-centralized form of, of currency so that's one thing that's going to have to be dealt with with the revolution is, is is unfortunately how goods are transacted and traded for and all of that stuff <clears throat> now let's see deism deism has always been a big one again the idea of deism is the equality uh, the religion of nature uh, basically, everyone is equal. Everyone is free. That's just how everything naturally is. Uh, the the other aspect that people say deism is is the um, the aspect that there is a deity or god or Tao or source, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but after the creation of it, well, unfortunately, um, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, that deity or whatever you want to call it really has no stake in in the world. Uh, for example, um, excuse me, whoever the creator was, just uh, you know, just however much you pray, you know, it's not gonna uh, come true or help you or anything like that. People have been trying and doing it for a long time, and of course, things don't happen. Uh, so there's that concept and that concept can go as far back as Gnosticism. What's interesting though, um, I mean, there's a lot to cover with deism, uh, and the war against deism still exists today, uh, since the enlightenment age from different numerous, uh, individuals and all, basically you'll see deism as people who support deism has always been about freedom from government freedom from religion they allow the freedom to if you wish to form government but those people who are uh within that government should have a, a say whether or not it's legitimate to them or not and stuff like that uh same thing with religion you know you can see as the founding fathers really held to the ideals of deism if not the uh, religious aspect at least the philosophical one uh, even christian deists at that time ones who have, who are really uh, either Protestant or Catholic, most n almost none were, were, were Catholic deists, but Christian deists, Protestant Protestant ones, uh, did support it, uh, and uh, again, it's the philosophical side of deism, and not necessarily the religious natural side, as as most considered pagan um or her heretical uh, etc so um deism is a uh, really ties into all of it as far as um, freedom is concerned revolutions that occur who the revolutions uh, are up against and it's always been the the ones who have assume a form of authority and and for force and control over others and um that's still the fight today, and it's it's a new new nuance. Somewhere in the early twentieth century, if not mid twentieth century, controlled opposition was in, a thing. It's definitely a thing now, but it's very very uh, refined, and it's almost to a weird point of like you. It's a can't trust anybody type of thing um and like things are weird because it's 
it's almost surreal. It's like, why would someone really s spend so much effort into um, doing bad things? Whether it's just for maybe it's personal kicks, maybe it's to become uh, famous for just being a troll um, to cause a lot of harm, mental harm, whatever. Uh, some form of, uh, you know, that controlled opposition, whether if it's somehow it supports the control systems to making sure that people don't really like freedom. <laughs> no, it's not that we have to redirect it. People really don't like bad people, <laughs> especially people who are hypocrites and say, look, uh, there's big, there's strategy involved. It's, it's very, a lot of strategy that needs to be taken in, into account. No person who rules, who assumes the form of authority, um, who wants to get people to support them and whatever they say goes, says, I'm evil. I worship the evil one. Therefore, you're going to want me to rule you. It's always the people who, uh, whether they are evil or not, um, they assume that they are the good ones, that they are uh, chosen by the highest almighty good God, deity, whatever. And therefore, uh, if you don't follow them, you are the evil one. So there's that big, big inversion that occurs. And of course, if you dive deep into esotericism, you're going to see that the inversion of things has always been a thing of the uh, control systems. Uh, and that relates to symbolism, which we will get into symbolism too. Um, just think of all the co-opted symbols uh, that religious institutions have had. Uh, not even religious ones, but uh, even um, governmental religious ones. I mean, just think of the the uh, swastika for the Nazis. They definitely uh, reversed it and take it took it to themselves. Uh, and they're not saying that they are the evil ones, that they have power. Uh, but that they were the perfect race. Um, uh, every other race wasn't, and they were the <clears throat> right. That was the the purity of, and, and just establish a pure line of, of humans type of thing. So again, even the the Nazis, they did not say that they were the evil ones. They did it in the name of of good, and um, God and all, etc. So, uh, there's always a lot of lying. There's a lot of uh, hypocrites. And you need to tell the, the hypocrites by their lying. They're basically, their actions don't line up with what they say. Uh, especially what they say that they're going to do and what they do. So, <clears throat> um, that's one of the fights that you can easily see against uh, those who support freedom and those who don't. And who are they supporting <laughs> easily uh with that um stalker narcissist tokyo shemp the anonymous troll self-admitted troll etc uh you can see that he definitely does not support freedom does not support opposition of the established rule um the control systems um just by the actions if his words might be otherwise but still it's not uh, how you would want to handle the freedom that uh, you want to want for everyone even like his his idea of freedom is for him to be free to do whatever he wants to those he dislikes or hates I am one of those and to limit the freedom of me um, but as Thomas Paine put even your enemies he's my enemy <laughs> yeah, a weak one at that but still he is my enemy, but I want him to be free to do uh, as what he does. Um, and if it affects me in the, my livelihood, my philosophy, my family, my personal uh, body, uh, it will be defended. Um, <laughs> so um, that's that's the thing is you have to be very vigilant. You have to be on guard and counter uh anything that 
could come up so basically be more disciplined than the other person and uh that takes dedication and of course that takes a lot of willpower and any type of battle war fight however you want to call it it's almost never about uh strength or force uh willpower is the biggest thing and um usually the ones who have willpower are the ones who are the most free and therefore they're the most disciplined and have the more most power which they refrain from using so it's it's an interesting reason as to why we've always seen freedom as the losing side because it's always going to the part where there's some <laughs> boundaries some things that you won't cross uh, because to cross it is you're just perpetuating the same thing in just a different form and every every substitution for that different form is still the same thing so again it's always going to be losing but never lost now what what's interesting with catholicism and atheism is that catholic church the pope and etc support atheism and i just find it interesting because i'm thinking back you know science is is highly regarded at least scientism by by these uh, uh very religious organizations that have very big control system in place like uh, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, the Pope, uh, the Vatican, etc. Jesuits. Uh, they, um, they're they like, yeah, atheism is okay. And uh, I got quotes from the Pope. It's better to be an atheist than a bad Christian. Uh, better to be an atheist than a hypo hypocritical Catholic. You know, it's there's like all the support for it. Um, I looked on Google. I want. <laughs> it's just curious uh, how many atheists converted to Catholicism, and uh, maybe I should type in the reverse: Catholics who convert to atheism. But basically, uh, it's a very big list, uh, a lot of views, um, and a lot of famous people who end up uh, being converted. Uh, a lot of these atheists. Uh, to Catholicism and I uh, always wonder it's always these famous individuals or ones who want to become more famous more um, earn more I guess uh, things like that heck you'll even see I think I saw one with uh, Stephen Colbert and he's again attempting to convert Bill Maher watch I'll bet you one day Bill Maher will convert to Catholicism uh, uh, yeah, here's one. Uh, Stephen Colbert's conversion from atheism back to Catholicism. And it keeps going and going. And you can kind of see that occurring. But you won't see support. And you'll never have seen support of of the, the same uh, Catholics in the church, the Catholic church, uh, with deism. Nor will you ever see it with Gnosticism. I don't think you'll even see it with Taoism. But ba basically, you know... It's, Nothing as as to how they support atheism, um, which is interesting and something that I want to do more research in if you want to do more research on it too. Um, because you would think that still uh, the idea of, of, of deism and Gnosticism and Taoism is like you want to make sure you are worshipping the best and foremost deity uh and the the the, the make sure you're like if you're going to worship or you're going to believe or you're going to follow or you're going to whatever it is um that it's going to be good <laughs> right and that's basically what deism and gnosticism and Taoism are attempting to do is to find their way uh to that and how are you going to do that well the one key word in almost all of them is nature um although certain types of gnosticism and again gnosticism is a big vast uh thing to look into 
they all have different ideas of what Gnosticism is, and that's where it gets very difficult to to cover because uh, they'll say, no, nature is actually bad. No, uh, nature is evil. Um, and the ones who created nature were evil and bad and all this other stuff. But, you know, the focus really isn't on nature, but uh, the one who created nature uh, actually was ignorant and all this other stuff. So Gnosticism, e even though, uh, you know, if you take that stance on it, the Catholic Church should probably support that stance, but still as a whole doesn't support Gnosticism at all. So they reject deism, they reject Gnosticism, Taoism, a couple other types of uh, definitely like paganism is not a good thing and what is paganism uh, in its broad general concept it's it's nature worship right uh they'll be against shamanism and and animism and uh, a bunch of other things and uh so it's just very interesting that the one thing that they do support is just the non-belief of any type of um higher consciousness being or something or other right uh, it's like why is that that's just very very intriguing to me it's like uh it's just another another um puzzle to look into another rabbit hole so you'll see me uh cover that in a future topic and um where i'm going to be doing a lot more research on which you should too as well you know there's there's so much like the history of atheism i don't know i just feel like there's just so much to go over but as far as um like it feels as though to the catholic church atheism is very much akin to their uh, support of science in that the majority of scientists have been <laughs> Jesuits and uh, Royal Society and stuff like that. And it's it was it's very I just find it very interesting because I think it's it's just. If, again, if you're going for the inversion, right, half people worship something that they know is not quite the highest, uh, not quite the goodest. <laughs> if that's, even, that's not even a word, but you know what I mean. Is to, is to invert things, lie, do the opposite and saying like, um, this is important when it's really not important. Or that's not important when it is really important. These types of things, you know, that's why you've got the... Uh, the term profane uh, very much in use and you know you even got different terminology for it for different types of religions that have these mystery cults um, mystery religions mystery schools that's what it's called and um, I just I just think it's I mean, basically what science is, is a way to identify nature and how nature behaves and call it a certain thing. But if they're the ones who are dictating what how nature behaves, they can interpret it however what, the way they want, even if that's not how it actually behaves. And therefore, you can't find uh, the truth of things within nature as in a lot of these philosophies. I really wouldn't call them religions. Um even though they'll say deism is a religion i and many people say it's a religion i think it's more of a philosophy very much in in terms of Taoism and and uh, uh even gnosticism to some extent again gnosticism is just so varied that it's difficult to just pinpoint like brush in in just one uh what's that term in one brush but anyways uh so that's just a prelude to all these topics that i'll be uh 
talking about either either conversing with someone um some guests special guests um just on my own uh i do like to um tie things in i mean uh the research i did with adam weissop the, the research i did with uh <coughs> authority the alan brados uh with the illuminati and and deism along with thomas Paine and Thomas Jefferson and Bishop James Madison, along with uh, Adam Weissopt and uh, a lot of that will tie in and basically how uh, the opposition is always against some type of freedom, basically. You know, it's just somehow, for some reason, if you're talking about the control mechanisms that are in place, control systems, it's always about some form of authority where um they are in that position to speak for the authority there thus you must follow otherwise you are evil you are her her heretic or um evil i don't know whatever excuse that they want and thus the majority of people who witness that goes oh yeah definitely against that control system they're definitely a terrorist or um like Satan worshippers, devil worshippers, or <sighs> all that stuff, right? Um, but they never think that, hey, the way that they act, it seems the opposite. They seem to be more of the devil worshippers they accuse others of. You know, the others never really accuse them of being um, <laughs> what the, they accuse others of. It's just like, hey... You really have no authority. Um, I'm not gonna follow you. Um, you could try to force me to do it, but I'll just uh, resist and fight back. And there you go. And then you've got the again. You've got the control systems going. Oh, you're gonna fight back. Oh, you're the aggressor. I'm the victim. It's like right. See how everything just gets flipped. Um, and we'll see. And we see that today. In society is like. Somehow the uh, the aggressor becomes the victim, and the system supports that, and therefore the the actual victims, well, uh, things don't go very well for them. Um, it's there's just so much to tie in. It's like where do you start? So we just have to start somewhere, and somehow get a. It's like looking at the big picture. It's like you're looking at a small picture, right? It's just really thin, whatever it is, small picture. And then you just kind of look at a couple and you like tie those in. You kind of see the bigger picture. But when you see the bigger picture, it's like there's just so many things, so many distractions involved. Uh, but you'll spot something, something very curious. And then you're going to zoom in on something after you see the big picture. You're going to see something that you never saw before, you never understood or realized before. And it's like, huh, that is crazy. Um, and But it's, there's very small number of people doing this. And the number of people who are doing this do not get a lot of recognition. Uh, a lot of people who understand where they're coming from. And... Uh, it is uh, very simple. Basically, a lot of people want to take on against these individuals and in saying that they're the evil ones. They're the state sponsors. They're the control system. They're the ones who can whatever. The actions always speak for themselves. So it's always a constant struggle. It's always a constant fight. Um, you're never going to win, right? The fight for freedom can't be won because if you're free, you've already won. Do you see that point, the concept of, of freedom? If you really are free and you're fighting for freedom, well, you're free. You've already won. The way to lose is to not be free, <laughs> is to uh, give up that freedom, right? Therefore, you've lost. So basically, you're always winning if you're free you they can't take anything away from you because um if you really you're really adamant about freedom 
you'll die free. The only time you die not free is when you finally give in and you lose. So, you know, you got to reverse that thinking that most people have is like, we're a slave to the system. No, we're a slave to the system if you are a slave to the system and you've given up on freedom. If you're... If you're under, if you understand that you're already free, you're always free until you give up that freedom, then you've lost. So therefore, you've always been winning. Uh, just gotta think of things in that perspective, and I, I think a lot of people don't. Um, and I think uh, that might be another thing that I might do a, a topic on, just freedom in itself, and uh, try to get people to understand that's how things really are like slavery exists if you accept being a slave in whatever form or fashion if you think uh the control systems out there control you well then yes you are controlled and therefore you've lost so um the state of mind another kind of important concept although it is a concept is very important um to your well-being as well uh the only thing that they can really take away from you in, uh, if you want to call it this life, this reality, etc., is your freedom, is your will, your free will. Uh, to fight against that, you have to have willpower. Uh, you never abuse your willpower because it is always your will, but to abuse... Um, Power is to go against your will, and will has to do a lot with a lot of symbolism, I guess you could say, uh, concepts and words. Words are symbols in themselves, letters as well. But uh, just to drive this home, uh, will, uh, freedom, um, power, uh, wisdom, they're all variations the same form if you want to use form in that very greek way so and that's another problem is just so many different terms based on where you're starting from like most of my starting from is from the western religious point of view where i'm trying to do is tie in uh the eastern philosophical view with the western philosophical philosophical view that has been intertwined with and use terminologies uh, that aren't conformed to the religious aspects of things. The only problem is every time you come up with a term that's not the concept of what that terminology is, the religious terminology, you use the philosophical terminology of it, the translation is always going to be towards that religious religious uh definition of it so um words like a lot of philosophers have, have talked about words are themselves a trap it's another vicious circle um which i talk about again another another thing to understand um the awareness of vicious circles this is an important video that one um so all of these things ideas concepts whatever it is that i still use uh, really have to focus on uh some key i hate to say words but the key key words <laughs> All right um because it's just that constant uh, thought whichever direction you want to go the way of the Tao the, you know just the Tao it's it's everyone has to find their own way it's the only way I could I, that's always been described but uh, you know it doesn't get through to people um but again I think a lot of people they don't change until something changes them and then they want to they'll you'll start if it's you who somehow are still listening to me after an hour um gonna start doing your own research really looking into things 
experiencing the uh, alternative consciousness that's consciousness of here and and the ideas sprouted forth by um, psychologists uh, as to the limitations of consciousness and uh, their way of, of, of defining nature conscious subconscious unconscious super the id i uh the ego and a whole bunch of stuff you know it's it's the way to communicate but it's not uh there there's a fault in the communication that's that's the um I think that's also the importance of understanding and learning different languages. Um, definitely want to start learning different languages for me myself. Uh, I've always, it's always been a thing, and I can. Uh, it is interesting that a lot of these philosophies that I wish to know and understand more have not been translated. They are very limited in translations, you know certain things that seem to want to hold the view of the control systems etc always have translations go everywhere so i just find that fascinating so uh, you know just like when you see youtube views and 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 stuff like that uh someone just all of a sudden get popular um uh, translated into all these different languages it's just very suspect but uh it, it, like guys i always find it funny because if i do watch a youtube that suggested a video and someone has a lot of views and they're just uh same things is always the same uh very uh, narcissistic tendencies very ego driven uh very materially um appealing um not just makeup and stuff but also body wise uh the cap captions the the titles some words will be it'll be you know the clickbait stuff you know very clickbaity uh very like self important type of things it's gonna be capital letters uh entire words capital letters um always gonna be supportive of some form of uh, uh restricted freedom uh, controlled uh mechanism um interesting to note that they always have uh, british accents english accents uh very posh <laughs> or whatnot uh it's still funny because I, I still remember and you, if you listen to me a long time i still remember um these are uh, the daughter of a persian uh grandmother who was very nice um, back at Redmond, Washington, and uh, she was a real estate agent. And she would talk in a British accent, English accent, right? Uh, when she's working, as uh, just because there's just more. Uh, it's a conditioning thing, right? And you're gonna be more appeal appeal to more people as refined and stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, when she's talking to me and just other people, like in private, she just uses her normal, like Americanized, uh, accent type of thing. We don't really have accents, but we seem to have, a, you know, it's the American English, not, uh, very hard as far as the way we speak. And it's not very appealing, right? Uh, but you never know if any of these, uh, uh, Egos on YouTube or whatever thing, if if they're uh, they're faking their accents, <laughs> we know that they've been faking a lot of things. So um, accents could definitely be one of them, but that's not really looked into. Uh, there's just so much thing, so many things out there. Um, an idea occurred to me today based off a of YouTube feed, and uh, I may I may pursue it a very similar concept who knows uh become the robin hood 
type um, in the new digital age, I guess you could say. Anyways, uh, so much talking. My throat hurts. Uh, it's dry. I need to get some sleep. It's 310, 308. Almost 310 here. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, anyways, I hope you have a, uh, a good night. Um, if you celebrate holy days, enjoy your holy days. Um, I don't really celebrate even though I participate. It's a little bit different, right? And I'm still, I'm thinking of my father and mother uh, and the old Korean paying respects to uh, the ancestors to, and the ceremonies that I remembered as a little kid that we used to do. Uh, I never liked it because I never understood it, but now that I understood it, I kind of want to part partake in it again. The problem is I don't really know any of my ancestors. So how can I uh, pay thanks to my ancestors if I don't know them? So uh, that will be an interesting thing. And uh, I, may, I may dive more into it as a, a topic on its own later on. So it's just keep in mind there's a lot of topics I really like to go into. A lot of it has to do with research that I do want to do just so I can show you the frame of mind of how I'm finding it, how uh, what the uh, legitimate authority, official, however you want to see it, uh, is, is, is spoken of, is written of. And then um, definitely want to try find the opposition. It's like, hey, what are the people not in authority? And have always been subjugated saying about this thing, this idea, this philosophy, this religion, this individual, etc. And just get that opposing view. And uh, most of my inclinations are going to be towards, again, the underdog. You know, I just find it uh, ironic that we always root for the underdog, yet... Um, as far as control and freedom goes, we always root for the ones who are top dogs. Anyways, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for listening and watching, and I'll see you another night.